Hello, this is Abby from AliHolly.com. In this video, I will be showing you how to make this Chinese lantern ornament that you can use to decorate your home with during Lunar New Year. You can find the free written pattern on my blog, and if you would like to print the pattern out to work alongside this video, you can find the printable PDF in my shop. I will put the links in the description box down below. For this lantern, I'm using Paintbox Yarns Cotton Aran in Pillar Red and Buttercup Yellow. I will also be using Curio No. 10 Thread from Knitpicks.com in the color Turmeric. If you can't find this particular thread, you can also use Embroidery Floss. The hook that I will be using is a 3.25mm crochet hook. And to make the process of creating the fringes a little bit easier, I will be using a 2.75mm hook. I'm also using a pair of scissors, a stitch marker, some pins, and a darning needle to help with embroidery and sewing. And I'll be using polyfill stuffing and some scrap yarn to stuff my ornament with. The first part we will be working on is the lantern itself. For round one of this lantern, we will be making six single crochet stitches into a magic circle. If you do not know how to make a magic circle, I have a more dedicated video tutorial for beginners that will go over it a little bit slower. I will link it over here. So now I'm working a magic circle. Then I'll be working six single crochet stitches into the magic circle. I'm inserting my hook into the circle, making sure that my hook is going under both the circle and the yarn tail. Then I'm yarning over and drawing a loop up. Yarning over again and drawing it through the two loops on my hook. Repeat that five more times for a total of six stitches. Pull on the yarn tail to close the magic circle up. In round two, we're going to be increasing into each stitch. So what that means is that we will be working two single crochet stitches into each stitch from round one. So I'm inserting my hook into the first stitch, yarning over and drawing up a loop, yarn over and draw through the two loops on my hook. Then I'm inserting my hook back into that same stitch and working another single crochet stitch. I also like to place a stitch marker onto my first stitch of each round to help me keep track of where I'm at. Continue working increased stitches into each stitch until you have a total of 12 stitches. If you are new to crochet or amigurumi, I have a few beginner tutorials that go over the basics of crochet and amigurumi, and I'll link those videos in the description box down below. In round three, we will be alternating between making one single crochet then increasing. So we're making one single crochet into this first stitch, then increasing into the next. Continue alternating between making one single crochet and increasing. 
Pause here to work the rest of the round and I'll meet you at the beginning of round four. In round four, we will be making one single crochet into the first stitch, then increasing in the next. And after that, we will be alternating between making two single crochet stitches then increasing. The final stitch of our round will be a single crochet. So I just made one single crochet stitch into my first stitch, then I'll be increasing into the next stitch. After that, I'm just alternating between making two single crochet stitches, so that's one single crochet stitch into each of the next two stitches, then increasing in the next. Pause here to continue alternating between making two single crochet stitches and increasing, and I'll meet you at the end of this round. For rounds 5 and 6, we will be making one single crochet into each stitch. Pause here to work rounds 5 and 6 and I will meet you at the end of round 6. In round 7, we will be working one single crochet stitch into each of the next 3 stitches, then increasing in the 4th. So we've just made one single crochet, two, three, then we're increasing. Pause here to continue working the rest of this round by alternating between making three single crochet stitches and increasing. And I will meet you at the end of this round. In round 8, we will be making one single crochet into each stitch. Pause here to work the rest of round 8 and I will meet you at the beginning of round 9. In round 9, we will be working 3 single crochet stitches, then decreasing the next 2 stitches together. So that's my first single crochet stitch, second single crochet stitch, third single crochet stitch, and then I'm decreasing the next two stitches by inserting my hook into the front loops of the next two stitches. Then yarning over, I'm drawing up a loop, then I'm yarning over again and drawing it through the two loops on my hook. Continue working 3 single crochet stitches then decreasing. Pause here to work the rest of this round and I'll meet you at the end of this round. In round 10, we will be working one single crochet stitch, decreasing, then we're going to be alternating between making two single crochet stitches, then decreasing. So we've just made one single crochet stitch, then we're going to be decreasing the next two stitches into one stitch, then we're working two single crochet, then decreasing. So that's one single crochet two, then decrease. 
pause here to continue working the rest of round 10 and I will meet you at the end of this round. In round 11, we will be alternating between working one single crochet stitch, then decreasing. So that's one single crochet, and then decreasing. Pause here to continue working the rest of this round, and I will meet you at the end of this round. Round 11 was the final round for this piece, so I'm going to fasten off, stuff the lantern fully, and close the hole. For this piece in particular, the tail you will need to leave is pretty long because it's going to become the part where you hang the ornament from. So I'm leaving a tail that is roughly 12 inches long. Pull on your hook to pull the tail through to fasten off. I'm also going to be removing my stitch marker as well before I start stuffing. To stuff my smaller ornaments, I like to use the mixture of scrap yarn along with polyfill. If you're planning to use scrap yarn for stuffing, make sure to sandwich it in between the stuffing. I also like to stuff my amigurumi fully so that the shape is a little closer to what it is designed to look like. As long as your stitches are tight enough and you're not stuffing it so much that the stuffing is showing through between the stitches, you're good. To close the hole off, thread your yarn tail onto a darning needle and insert your needle through the front loop only of the next stitch. Pull through. Continue doing this for the rest of the stitches. If you need to see this in more detail, I have a more dedicated video tutorial on closing the hole and I will link it in the description box down below. When you've gone through all the stitches, pull on the tail to cinch up the hole. I also like to weave the tail under the center circle to secure it in a little bit more. The next part we will be working on is the top of the lantern. With your yellow yarn, Make a magic circle and work six single crochet stitches into it. Pull on the tail to close the magic circle. For round two of the top, increase into each stitch. You should have a total of 12 stitches when you are done with this round. Pause here to work the rest of round two and I'll meet you at the end of this round. For round 3 of the top, we will be working into the back loops only and alternating between making one single crochet 
then single crocheting two stitches together. To do so, insert your hook into the back loops of the next stitch. So I'm inserting my hook into the back loops only, yarning over, and I'm drawing up a loop. Insert your hook into the back loops of the next stitch, yarn over, and draw up another loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and draw it through all three loops on your hook. Continue alternating between working one single crochet stitch and single crocheting two together for the rest of the round. When you're done with the round, cut the yarn tail, making sure to leave a long enough tail for sewing. Then pull your hook up to fasten off. To make the edges a little bit cleaner, we're going to be doing a seamless join in the round. To do so, thread the yarn tail onto a darning needle. Locate the second stitch of the round and insert your needle under both legs of the stitch. Pull through. Then insert your needle into the center of the final stitch and out the back. If you need to see this done a little bit slower and in more detail, please check out my seamless join in the round video. To make this tail easier to sew with later on, I'm threading the yarn tail out to the side. I'm also going to trim the tail from the magic circle down a little so that it's a little bit more manageable. Set this piece aside and let's start working on the bottom piece. For the bottom piece, Make a magic circle and work six single crochet stitches into it. Pull on the tail to close up the magic circle. Then work a slip stitch into the first stitch. Cut the yarn tail making sure to leave a long enough tail for sewing. Then pull your hook up to fasten off. The next thing we will be working on is the fringe for the bottom of the lantern. Take your thread and wrap it around your fingers 18 times, making sure that the end of the thread is down by your pinky. Once you've wrapped the thread around 18 times, cut the working end down by your pinky. Remove your fingers from the loop, making sure to pinch the top so that the loop stays. Then take your scissors and cut the loop along the bottom to create 18 identical strands of thread. Separate the strands into bundles of 3 for a total of 6 bundles. To create the fringes, we're going to be using a smaller hook. We will be working into the bottom piece, and since we slip stitched into the first stitch, the stitch that we will be working into will be the slip stitch instead of the single crochet from below it.
Insert your hook into the front loop of any stitch. So you're inserting your hook in the front and out the center. Take one of the bundles of thread and fold it in half. Then, pull the center of the bundle through with your hook. Wrap the tail ends of the bundle around your hook and carefully pull it through the loop on your hook. Don't worry if the ends are not completely even. We will be giving it a trim later on. Pause here to repeat what we just did with the rest of the bundles to create the rest of the fringes. When you're done, comb the fringes downwards with your fingers and trim the tail from the magic circle so that it's a little bit more manageable. Now that all of our pieces are ready, we're going to embroider the lantern itself. I've already thread a long strand of curio thread onto my darning needle, and we're going to start embroidering by inserting our needle in through the top out the bottom. Pull it almost all the way through. Then we're going to take the working end of our thread and wrap it across the top making sure to go over this line twice by wrapping around the lantern twice. Then insert your needle back into the center of the bottom and out the top. Make sure that your needle is coming out from beside both of your strands. Pull through and we're going to essentially be using our working end to staple down the line in the middle. Before you staple the line down, make sure that the lines are nice and straight. Insert your needle back into that center hole, making sure to go over your line. Pull the needle throughout the bottom. Embroider another line in the same way we did the first one to divide the lantern up into four segments. The little tail end that I left in the beginning was kind of getting in the way, so I'm just going to cut it off. Embroider in two more lines to divide the lantern up into eight segments.
With the working end, staple over some of the strands at the bottom of the lantern to further secure. Then thread the needle out the side of the lantern. Pull through. Cut the tail as close to the lantern as possible, then squish the lantern to hide the tail end. Next, we will need to make the loop to hang the lantern with. To do so, thread the yarn tail of the lantern onto a darning needle, then thread the tail through the center of the bottom and out the center of the top. Pull through. Determine how long you want the hanging loop to be by folding down the tail and adjusting the length of the loop. When you're happy with the length of the loop, tie a knot as close to the lantern as possible. To make the knot a little bit more secure, you can tie another knot over it. Cut the excess yarn tail as close to the knot as possible without cutting the knot. Insert your smaller hook through the center of the top piece. Wrap the hanging loop from the lantern around your hook, then pull it through the top. Pin the top piece onto the lantern, making sure that it's positioned properly on the top. Sew it down in place when you are happy with the placement. To sew the top piece on, insert your needle into the lantern immediately where your sewing tail is on top of, then thread it out below the next stitch of the top piece. Pull through. Then insert your needle through the next stitch of the top piece and pull it through like you're doing a whip stitch. Repeat the steps we just did to sew the rest of the top to the lantern. When all the stitches are sewn onto the lantern, thread the yarn tail out the side of the top piece, then cut the yarn tail as close to the top piece as possible. You can squish to hide the tail. For the final part of this Chinese lantern ornament, we're going to be sewing the bottom piece to the bottom of the lantern. Pin the center piece of the bottom piece to the center of the bottom of the lantern. You can add more pins to the bottom piece to make sure it doesn't move around when you're sewing it into place. Sew the bottom piece into place the same way you did with the top piece.
When the bottom piece is fully sewn onto the lantern, you can thread the tail out the side of the lantern, then cut the tail as close to the lantern as possible. Squish to hide any excess tail. The final thing we have to do is to trim the fringes to make our lantern look a little bit neater. Thank you for following along with this video. If you would like to see more Amigurumi tutorials, please subscribe to my channel. And if you're looking for more free Amigurumi patterns, please visit ollieholly.com. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!